Hi there. In the story of great brands, some common themes have been identified. For example, great brands focus on building long-term customer loyalty. They innovate continuously and they are dedicated to excellence. Today, global brands like Walmart, Amazon and Apple are examples of business excellence. The question is, how did they achieve such heights? Are such heights the exclusive reserve of a few? Or can you and I also run businesses that stand out amongst peers? As an entrepreneur or business executive, do you wish to be a role model of excellence? If yes, then you are in the right company. Excellence can simply be defined as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. From a business perspective, excellence is delivering outstanding results to your various business stakeholders. These stakeholders can be your customers, your staff, your shareholders or the community where your business operates. Achieving business excellence requires an ongoing commitment to improve in all areas of your business, from sales to product development to operations. As complex as this may sound, the journey towards excellence starts with asking some simple questions. Is my business operating at its highest level of potential? In what area is my business falling behind and what must the business do to improve in that area? It was once said that excellence is never an accident, it is always the result of high intention, sincere effort and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines destiny. Can you make a decision to get your business to review these questions on a monthly or quarterly basis as you pursue excellence? Can you also, as the business owner or business executive, be accountable to someone for pushing through on identified actions that you need to take? If you do this, with time, the difference will become apparent. And maybe one day, we will see your business name on the list of globally acclaimed brands. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This is a well-known African proverb and these words underscore two important truths. The first is that we are all going somewhere. Secondly, in this journey of life, we have to decide whether our goal is to make it quick or to build a lasting legacy. As we progress in our professional or business careers, one of the things we quickly realize is that we cannot succeed in isolation. We need others to journey with us and provide support along the way. And this support is only possible by the strength of the relationships we have. To build these relationships, we must be ready and willing to network. According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, networking is the cultivation of productive relationships for employment or business. As a student, professional or business person, networking is a necessary tool for advancement. Cultivating God-given relationships helps us travel further in our fields of endeavor and achieve great results. Here are some reasons why. Networking is productive, whether for social business or educational or even spiritual purposes. Networking benefits both parties. It is an opportunity to exchange ideas, gain insights and foster lifelong collaboration. Two, networking must be intentional. This means networking requires deliberate effort. You cannot attend a business event, for instance, and keep to yourself throughout, and then wonder why you didn't secure any new relationships. You must be ready to interact with others with similar interests and gradually build partnerships. You must also cultivate yourself to be the kind of person people want to associate with. Networking is mutually beneficial, remember. You must give value to receive value. We can get a lot done through our network. For example, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 10, we read that while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors came and ate with him and his disciples. We see Matthew here leveraging on his network for the kingdom through social interactions. As we reflect on this, I leave us with this quote from Potter Gill, which says, your network is your net worth. Another principle is also found in this quote by Zig Ziglar. It says, you can have everything you want in life if you would just help people get what they want. Hi there. Someone once said, do something every day that will inch you towards a better tomorrow. This is called having a growth mindset. So I ask, what does growth mean to you? Do you ever pause to ask yourself this question? 
Growth is a process of continuous change, evolution and advancement. It is gradual and involves a series of action before change becomes evident. In life, you are either moving forwards or moving backwards. There is no middle ground. You and I need to constantly refine ourselves to remain relevant and valuable in our ever-changing global landscape. As such, we need to constantly look within and seek ways to better ourselves by improving the way we think, the habits we cultivate, making necessary adjustments along the way. Personal growth involves every facet of our lives, either spiritual, emotional, mental, financial, and physical. It involves all aspects. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to growth. Our growth metrics and plans will differ from person to person based on our circumstances and the knowledge available to us at the time. But there are universal ideologies that guide growth. First, for growth to happen, we must first be aware of who we are. This is called self-awareness. And may I recommend the Bible to you as the greatest tool we can use to achieve self-awareness. Make a commitment today to read and meditate on your Bible daily. Second, we must acknowledge that we need to grow. Third, we must identify the areas of growth. And fourth, we must proactively work towards improving those areas. Your growth journey is a lifetime commitment. It is a marathon, not a sprint. There will be ups and downs, failures and successes. There will be days you get frustrated and you think you're not making any progress. If you stay consistent and focused, however, you will find that you have been advancing upward and forward, slowly and steadily. In six months time, when you look back, you will see that you have grown in every area of your life. Like the Chinese proverb states, be not afraid of growing slowly, be afraid of only standing still. In 1 Peter 2, the Bible says, be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. And on that note, I would like to welcome you to Practical Reflection. <music>